let's talk about terror on the prairie uh gina carano of course uh this is a great segue from disney unceremoniously let go from the mandalorian um as her character cara dune uh which was i thought a great character i i don't think that while i actually think gina carano is incredibly sexy i think she is very attractive woman um sh she can she has the ability to be feminine but also she is very she can be very physical right i mean she has had a career fighting in the ring okay a successful career at that and is you know became an actress starring what's that steven soderbergh movie you've got her imdb up alan this is you're supposed to be like my robin quivers <laughs> and have it all up so when i need a fact alan come on uh, we're getting there uh, I, da, 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 da. I'd say something like chop chop, Alan, chop chop, but then people like might think extraction. Yeah, I think that was the movie. Okay. Steven Soderbergh, right? Yeah, it wasn't Kickboxer Vengeance, was it? No, it was a yeah, ex but okay. it's it had also, to be. No, was it that or something? Well, Anyways, okay, I no, remember was it was a very forgettable title, and that sounds like one of those forgettable title action movies. I'll find it. In any case, um, so she was unceremoniously let go from Disney, and it's just like <clears throat> one in like. That was sort of one in like a whole series of things that Disney continues to do where I'm just like, do you want my money? Do you want my money? Do you want me as a customer? Like there's clearly hypocrisy at work because, you know, I follow her on social media. She follows me as well, actually. Um, so uh, she, you know, I, the things she says, I think, are in the interest of not being divisive. If you really read what she's saying, she's like, don't get sucked in by all this divisive rhetoric that's coming out, you know, especially around election time. And she just happened to have the wrong politics, which is why she was let go. I think it's very hypocritical. I think it's obvious to everyone watching. And um, I'm so happy that within the week of her being let go from Disney because of, you know, a group of woke activists within Lucasfilm, which I hope all get fired one day because, because that kind of act, no, I'm serious. I hope they all get fired. I hope they all get fucking fired because they deserve it. That's a horrific way to act is to push your morality on someone else. That's what they used to complain about the, the, the religious right in the nineties, trying to push your stuff on me. Well, you know what? I don't like your stuff being pushed on me. I don't like it. I reject it. I, 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 you know what? You, we should just allow we, we we need to learn to coexist do you remember that bumper sticker that that lame bumper sticker that you always see on on cars sometimes well you know that actually has to uh, happen and it seems to to work well in the real world not so bad in the real world but it's terrible on social media which i think turns people into assholes having said all that within a week of her being let go from disney she was picked up by the Daily Wire, who had a script in development. Um, they're, they're making movies now. We talked about what is a woman, uh, like a week, was it last week or a couple weeks ago? Um, we talked about what is a woman. Um, this, then uh, Shut In is a movie that, that uh, they, which actually mm -hmm. won an award at our uh, event award this, right? Shut In, really great uh, thriller, like all kind of set in one room and it's intense. I mean, uh, and, uh, parts of it very difficult to watch. And so Terror on the Prairie is a traditional Western. Uh, it's And Alan, you watched it. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. Now, I will say this. You would expect that like the Daily Wire is going to make this starring Gina Carano um, and really some grizzled, uh, great character actors um, as filling out the rest of the cast in this brutal, brutal it's brutal. It's brutal. I mean, the opening scene, this isn't, if this were rated, it'd be R rated. And yeah, it would be TVMA uh, currently. TVMA, R rated. It's, I mean, Daily Wire, I will say this, them putting this movie out, this is not like the, a sort of milk toast. Like, it's not family friendly. Let's say that. This is not a family friendly Western, right? I mean, the opening scene, I, I don't want to ruin too much, but opening scene, you see someone get graphically scalped graphically that is the opening scene they set up like who the bad guys are okay 
and these bad guys come and you just it's um you see these bad guys they're sort of bounty hunters they catch this guy scalp him and you go like oh when is that when is that obviously there's going to be a conflict uh Gina Carano's character she has a young son it's probably 8 10 years old uh and a, a young uh baby like well a, all aren't all babies young? Yeah. I think all babies are young. What am she I has doing? an infant. She has, she an, has infant. an infant and she has a, a young son and a husband who kind of go. she's, she's holding down the fort traditional. There's a really good YouTube channel that I watch. I find it really relaxing and it's where they do. Um, what's it called? I kind of forget the name of this YouTube channel. I'll, 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 but it's like, it's called American. It's just something what it does is, they show like recipes from the early 1800s and 1700s. Then they only use tools that exist at that time to make those recipes. And you'd be surprised how sophisticated food was back then. Chicken pot pie, a traditional Christmas dinner. And this woman and her either husband or boyfriend, they it's very quiet. They almost don't talk. They just put up like graphics and they only use the tools they had back then and the methods to actually make home cooked meals. And it takes hours and they do it in real time. And it's, I find it really soothing. So I I, I know, bizarre. Um, in any case, uh, you see like the, how rough daily life is just doing the most simple thing. You know, you don't just grab a K-cup and make a cup of coffee. You get the beans, you do it on the stove. It's like, you see how hard life is. You go to the well, you get water. You get water. It's not like, yeah, exactly. It's just like all those things. So all that's kind of like played out, like how difficult life is. And then of course, what's going to happen? Right. We know that these bounty hunters are going to come in conflict with Gina Carano's family. Um, I even forget what was the name of her character. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, Haywire was the name. Thank you. Haywire. Yeah. Haywire. Haywire was the name of that uh, Steven Soderbergh movie. Okay. Thank you for that. But. Um, oh, hey, Hattie McAllister. Hattie McAllister. She's got like the same Hattie, right? It's a very, yeah. that's a Western classic name. And it's brutal. And the thing is, is that I, I, I kind of feel like there's no, the other thing is there's no agenda with this movie whatsoever. There's like none whatsoever. It's, it's a simple story of Gina Carano versus the bad guys. And she's just waiting on the like, please her husband to get home so she can deal with this. Right. And everything that can go wrong does go wrong in the, in the, and in the midst of this, she's trying to keep, take care of this infant. But she is, the good thing is, she's good with a gun. You're going to be on in on the frontier, you know, as a woman, home alone, you better know, you, you better be good with a gun. And she is. Uh, while I thought the movie was entertaining, I thought it was incredibly brutal. I thought it was really raw and brutal. And maybe like, I mean... Because I, I always look at like a lot of Westerns as being kind of hopeful and romantic. And this doesn't attempt to romanticize the Old West at all. And in fact, there's a conflict between Gina uh, Hattie and her husband about like, we should just move back. Like, mm -hmm. let's just move back to the city. Let's move back to St. Louis, where there's some civilization, right? Like, she's like complaining about like how difficult it is. So, uh, so, and I have another, so I really enjoyed the film. Should you subscribe to Daily Wire just to watch this movie? Uh, I don't know. I think it's like $15 a month, which is kind yeah. of what you would pay to see one movie. So for 15 bucks, you can see Shut In, uh, The Hyperions, What, what is, is a woman? woman, This, you can subscribe Run, hide, for a month. Yeah. You can bail. What's that? Run, hide, fight. Oh, that's right. Run, hide, fight. So there's like, yeah, they got like, and, and more movies coming. Right. Um, yeah. So, so for 15 bucks for a month, you drop in, but it's not a streaming service that is robust enough, I think, to keep you beyond that, unless your politics align with the Daily Wire. And yeah, I was gonna say, you're going to get a lot of political commentary along with your subscription. Right, well. right. And there's, there's actually an interesting series on there about Fauci uh, that Michael Knowles did, which I thought was, which I thought was very good. Um, but, but the thing is this, it's a, it's a simple story Western that I thought was 
entertaining and at times hard to watch specifically because it doesn't lean into the romanticism. It leans into the brutality. And if that's your bag, uh, you're going to love it. And of course, I, I actually uh, really love Gina Carano and I'm rooting for her success. So I paid to see it. Alan got a screener. Okay. So, um, but my, I want to hear your thoughts, Alan. I've kind of given yeah. a, a little bit of the story without giving too much away, but I want to, I want to hear your thoughts on, I want to hear your thoughts on this film. And yeah. We'll you know, I, I would agree with a lot of what you said. I, I would, the, the thing that struck me the most, one is after coming off of a two, two and a half hour discussion of Kenobi, uh, just the storytelling in this uh, is, is so refreshing. <laughs> Um, you know, they, they build the sympathy for Gina Carano's character. You, you understand she doesn't want to be there. She, the life is too hard for her. Um, it's too rugged, too, too gritty. And, uh, and now she's faced, you know, so you, right there, you've built a lot of sympathy for her, her children, and, uh, and basically a husband who feels responsible for the situation he put her in. And then now you have these bounty hunters coming in. The thing that that stood out to me, though, the most is the fact that, you know, here's Gina Carano with this MMA background. She's a tough fighter. And yet she portrays Hattie as a typical woman uh, in the Old West at that time. So there's no point where she, you know, stands up proudly and starts wailing away at, at one of the bad guys, uh, you know, MMA style. No, they keep it very grounded. And, and they almost pose the question of how would a strong, determined woman who's put up against the wall in this intense situation, how could she possibly survive it? And that's how the story plays out. And, um, and the other thing is that uh, the use of guns. I'm just surprised how bad guns were back in those days, how, uh, how, how it's almost impossible to actually shoot someone uh, in, in, in the Wild West at that time. And, you know, we see this in, you know, if you've ever watched the A-Team, you know, you can have a machine gun and never hit a soul. Uh, but in this one, they kind of justify this whole idea at the end of the movie, at, at the very last shot, which which to me was amazing. So I I think what drew me or what, what stood out to me the most about this movie is just the authenticity of it from, from the situation, from the setting, and how the storyline plays out. Yeah, it's it's I think it's a more realistic portrayal mm -hmm. of the Old West rather than the romanticized version we've seen yeah. in movies like, say, Dances with Wolves. Right. Yeah. Or no. even your typical Westerns, even. Yeah, your typical Westerns tend to be more romanticized. I think this was brutally realistic. And and, I, you know, Gina Carano's great in it. Gina mm -hmm. Carano's great in it. I you know, I don't think she'll ever come back as Cara Dune. She'll never work for Disney again. I, I think uh, I think those people who were involved in her being dispensed with so unceremoniously and disrespectfully, I think they deserve all deserve to be fired. I think is a horrible way to treat your talent. Um, just because you personally may disagree with her politics. And I think her politics, the way I see, I think her politics are pretty middle of the road. It, well, I don't think she's really, overtly, it's not like she's endorsing candidates. You know, she's just no, giving no. her feelings about certain subjects that happen to, and, and it's not like she's going full on right or full on left. No, she's, she's not. There's a very nuance to her arguments. Her yeah, she's, she's, yeah, I think that, she, yeah, I, I agree. And that's kind of like, I, I, you know, that's, that's why I admire her because she's being brave at a time when, you know, you have to choose a side. She, I don't think she's necessarily a uh, Republican. She probably has many views or, or views that kind of fit that. But uh, I don't know. I, I think she's certainly someone who is brave standing up at a time when, and saying things that, um, you know, that most people are too afraid to say mm -hmm. out loud. Uh, in any case, uh, I recommend this movie. I, I strongly recommend it, but with the caveat is this is not a movie for kids. It's incredibly brutal, and uh, you're they're, they're shocking moments in it. And yeah. most people, if I say that out loud, most people are gonna go, "That's gonna sell it to me." I love that, and and okay, but like I'm not a big fan of like stuff that's like super realistically gory, like that. Like I get a bit squeamish about. Yeah. And uh, Gina Crown did a great job.
So, I think people are dropping a bone tomahawk. Uh, I, I've seen dragged yeah. across concrete. I mean, those are those are incredibly brutal. It's 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 yeah. definitely moving in that direction, but I don't think it goes as far as those two films. Well, let's get. We've got another movie to talk about, the Black Phone, and we're gonna we're trying to do a preview of that. We'll do a more extensive review next week, but let's get into it. Chat here, Latino Slant says, "Great chat, folks. Keep it up. Smash that like right now. Smash that like, like Alan." Said. <laughs> And <laughs> Joshua Melton says, it was Haywire. Fat Elvis says, yeah. Alan Shame. Uh, Charles K., I don't necessarily agree with some of the Daily Wire content, but I applaud their incursion into the entertainment industry and attempt to create an alternate movie economy. I agree with you, Charles K., mm -hmm. but I will say this, I'll add this. I think they're, I, 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 I like what they're attempting to do, but it's all about scale. I don't think you're going to get your average person to subscribe to a service like the Daily Wire. One, if their politics don't align and your politics don't have to be where the Daily Wires is necessarily. You don't have to be a conservative to enjoy the movies that the Daily Wires put out. You know, you don't have to be you know, you, you yeah. can enjoy shut in for what it is. You can enjoy the Hyperions. You can en enjoy Terror on the Prairie. You can enjoy these movies for what they are. You don't have to have. Your, your politics don't have to align to a certain place to enjoy these movies. And I think they might be better off if they also, in addition, like maybe they keep them on the daily wire for 45 days and then you can buy it on, on a streaming, like you can buy it on yeah. Apple movie, you know, the, the iTunes, you can buy it on, on Amazon prime or whatever. I think they would do these movies a better service by broadly releasing them after they're on the streaming service on, on their exclusively on their streaming service for a time. I understand why they're doing that. You know, they're trying to to build their their streaming service. But what if I just want to see Terror on the Prairie? I'm scrolling through my voodoo or movies anywhere and I just want to see it or Amazon Prime video. There's so many places that you can get movies uh, video on demand. I just want to see Terror on the Prairie. I don't want to subscribe to the Daily Wire. I understand why they're doing it because it's data collection. Right. Yeah. So well, they keep yeah, the monthly I right. also yeah, I also say, you know, I think they're new to this. It feels like they're making a lot of new mistakes. Like, just the fact that I got my screener last night, um, as opposed to a shut-in I got several days beforehand. Even Hyperion's I got several days beforehand. And I seem to be, you know, they seem to be sending us uh, the screeners a, a little bit late, which which might also explain why, you know, there's not a lot of reviews on there on, on Rotten Tomatoes, at least not from us. Well, would we, we'll have a review of Terror on the Prairie on the website. Yeah, I got to do it this afternoon. It's yeah, nice. cool. Uh, Flaccid Phoenix says, Gina can push any agenda on me. Oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> Anna, I haven't seen a good Western in a while. Uh, this is a good one, and be prepared. Beowulf's Revenge sounds like an accurate Western. Life is really bad out in the West. Mm -hmm. True. CD Stein, 69 for nine ninety nine. Totally obvious why she was let go, because there are others still employed and have said far worse and divisive. Agree. Please, mm -hmm. God, someone get rid of Kathleen Kennedy. You know, we need another, you know, board revolution where, you know, when they got rid of Eisner, when uh, Roy Disney got in to take out the board, uh, it feels like that we need to get back to that. We need to do that again. Patrick Lemire, I'm curious about Daily Wire's model. Just all views on their platform or limited theatrical, theatrical release? No, it's just it's just behind a paywall. It's 15 bucks. I mean, 15 bucks, and then you can watch all the movies that they have yeah. on their platform. There's only like six, but there's also documentary series and and other stuff. I mean, you met if you, I I recommend subscribe for a month and then yeah. just watch watch all with all that that's on there. But my my suggestion, if anyone from the Daily Wire is watching this, you need to release your movies theatrical because these are theatrical quality movies, even if they're limited theatrical release, and there's a way to do that. And if someone there doesn't know how, contact me directly. I can put you in touch with people that can help with that. It's not not difficult to do a limited theatrical release. And then you got to put these movies on other platforms because they're very good. And I think that there are certain customers that are not going to, for whatever reason, they're not going to subscribe to another streaming service because I, I think that's a thing that people are turned off by now. Like, I don't want to subscribe to Paramount Plus because it's just another one. Mm -hmm. And I have to remember when I get my bill or whatever, remember to cancel it. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Harvey wonders, are they having trouble getting on other platforms? I don't know. Uh, that could be it. Also, Solomon Thornton, politic, political views aside, we can all agree that Gina Carano is really hot and a mm -hmm. badass. 
Yes. Anna, Chris, is the cooking channel you're referring to called English Heritage? There's another one, too, where the lady makes Appalachian recipes. It, I, I think it's more American heritage. Amer, but it's, oh, God. Ugh. I'm good. I, I got it. You know, I have to like stop and go search. I know. Too Unfortunately, much I, can't today. Uh, Unfortunately Matt, I can't look that up for you. Terror on the Prairie is about a bunch of gay couples forcing Gina to make them wedding cakes. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually not. Infinite Main for $10. How does DW make money on multi million dollar movies? They surely won't make their budget back in subs. I don't think this was a multi million dollar movie. I think it was maybe a couple million. It was shot in Montana. Yeah. And it was beautiful. I've been to Montana once. Gorgeous. Yeah, I don't think they're at the multi-million stage yet. Uh, uh, a very uh, clever, sinister reviews for $5 says, was it more brutal than Hostels with Christian Bale? I never saw it, so I don't know. But if that's also a brutal Western, mm -hmm. then I'm going to say it, it more than likely is. Not the Batman, not a Western, if someone isn't thrown through a saloon window. Um, there is breaking glass in this, and there are whores. Uh, Michael Seagriff, did you see Unforgiven, Alan? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we're talking about the the realism of the Western, and uh, definitely that was another one. Akanika, Allen's review tops. Yeah. Thanks. I made uh, sure I started that one. <laughs> Patrick Lemire, it is more brutal. Is it more brutal than Unforgiven? I uh, think. I don't think so. I at least along the same lines. Mm -hmm. uh, Adventure Industries. S. Craig Zoller hasn't hasn't made anything in a while. Yeah. Girth, we dragged sorry. across concrete was 2018. I mean, see, that's pre-COVID. He's girthy guitarist is making my point for me. I wanted to watch the film too, but didn't want Daily Wire. You know what I mean? It's sort of like mm -hmm. I just want to see the movie. So the only way to see it is to subscribe to Daily Wire. So, but there's plenty of people that are like, oh, I like Gina Carano. I want to see that movie. And I think that that's what they're hoping for is that you'll just subscribe to the Daily Wire for one month. Then they've got your email address when not necessarily if you bought it on Prime. Or bought it on mm -hmm. on iTunes, you wouldn't they wouldn't collect that data. So there you go.